In this last video, we set up Microsoft's Hyper-V Server 2012, um, the core edition, and it is free, by the way. And I set it up here at the house as a test lab to try to, you know, learn it a little bit more and to do more videos and all this other stuff. But I have quickly realized that Microsoft did not make this an easy process to be able to remotely manage it in a work group environment. If you're in a domain environment, it would work great. Um, but because we're in a work group environment, there's a lot of security things going on that it's just not letting me remotely manage this thing easily. So I did get it to work. Um, it's not the prettiest of ways. It's not. Uh, it's probably not the most secure way because I'm I'm doing something with the firewall on that Hyper-V server. But uh, it, this isn't in, in a production environment. It's just here at my house. Let's get started. All right. So what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and log into. Grab my password and log into the Windows 8 machine. We're going to be remotely manage it from Windows 8, and this is a freshly installed Windows 8 box. Um, I initially was setting it up and I got it to work fine on my main computer, but I did so many different changes. I don't know what the heck actually worked, so I had to redo it. And I've been reshooting this video at least probably eight times already because I run into I keep running into problems. But I think I got it down and working, so hopefully it's going to help you guys out. Um, so the first thing we need to do is, if you did see the last video, we enabled remote desktop. So we're going to go ahead and just open up remote desktop, MSTSC, and let's remote into this Hyper-V server. Now, one quick important point from what I've been reading is that you need to be able to um, resolve uh, the Hyper-V server via name, so or via computer name. So let's just make sure we can do that. Ping VM server one. Okay, it does resolve. It's IPv6 address, but that's okay. Um, as long as it resolves, because when we open up Hyper-V Manager here on the client machine, we're going to use the name instead of the IP address. I have not tried it otherwise, but I'm just taking their word for it, and uh, I just don't feel like wasting more time on this. So let's go ahead and remote into the sync. VM Server 1. Remember, I don't have a domain controller here, no DNS server or anything like that. So, um, all right, what's the admin? I think here, let's see. All right, so here we are on the Hyper-V server, and this is what we see. We don't need that one. We're going to work with this one. So I already have the command in here that we need to run. Um, now, what I was told and I heard before, let's first get into PowerShell, is you should be able to do remote management, and that would enable remote management protocols through the firewall on this Hyper-V server. I could it, it would not find it look I'll even I'll even try it and you're gonna see an error here uh, it says it doesn't recognize that display name so I said forget it I'm just going to do it on all to see if I can at least get the stupid thing to run and to, to get it to work and you can see it's going through and enabling it everything so again it's probably not the most secure but you know this is not production um, it's just my little test lab so um, as of right now, that's all we need to do here on the server side. And so let's minimize this. Now on the client side, we have a few different things. First, let's go ahead and install the Hyper-V role or the Hyper-V, um, what do you call it? Manager. Okay, so we could be able to hit just a Windows key. All right. So we're going to do programs and features. So I'll just type features. And there it is. We're going to turn on Windows features. You'll see the Hyper-V section here. We'll expand that out. Of course, it's grayed out here on the platform. It's because I'm running this Windows 8 box in a virtual machine. So it's not letting me set up another virtual machine within the virtual machine. So we're going to select all of it. And we're going to also get the module and the command list for, for uh, Hyper-V via PowerShell as well. So that's fine. I'm not going to use them in this video, but maybe in a future video. And it's actually fairly quick to install this. And we don't need a reboot. Pretty sure. Yep. Okay. So now that we have that installed, let's just see what happens if we try to remotely connect to that thing with the Hyper-V manager. Okay. So we're going to right click, connect to server, VM server one. Oh, we got an error. You do not ha have the required permission to complete this task. Okay. So what we got to do now is Windows keeps a list of credentials. And what we need to do is we need to add this VM server one as a target as another as another set of credentials so the way we do that 
we're gonna go ahead and hit start. We're gonna type CMD and I wanna run this as administrator. Hit okay, all right. So here there's this command called CMD key. And if you look at it with a question mark, you can see that there's, um, it creates, displays, and deletes stored usernames and passwords. And I just recently found out about this, to be honest with you, it's pretty neat. Um, so what we can do is we can actually run a list to see what's in there now. List, all right, there's just one target. It's this uh, generic whatever, I don't even know. So we wanna add one to this. So what we're gonna do is go CMD key, forward slash add colon the name of the server vm server one that has to be the same as the the actual computer name we're gonna hit space we're gonna do user forward slash user colon and i'm gonna use that administrator account that i created or you can use the administrator the actual administrator account and we're gonna just do pass you could put the password in here and um you know whatever the password is but if somebody's, you know, if you're scared that somebody's gonna see your password, you can just leave the colon off, hit enter, it's gonna prompt it. And I will hit that, enter. All right, it says credential added successfully. So if we list it again, you can see here, we have this new one, target is VM server one, and it has the encrypted password, and then the user account. So we're, we're gonna be done here, so I'm gonna just hit exit. Let's try it again. All right, now we can get to it, yet access is still denied, unable to establish connection. It, it somewhat works. You can actually run through the whole installation of the VM server, but at the very end, it's gonna complain that um, you don't have access and you won't be able to start it or anything like that. So there's one other thing we need to do. And let me see if I can remember this now. If we uh, type DCOM CNFG, I think it is, yep. Right click that, so it's DCOM CF CNFG. Right click it, run as administrator. And we'll wait for it to come up. All right, we need to expand the component services and computers. And then we need to right click on my computer, go to properties, come up here to the com security tab. And I believe it's access permissions, edit limits. Click on anonymous and remote access. We're gonna allow that. Hit okay, hit okay. And we're going to close that. We're going to refresh this. And now you can see it actually, it actually notices that there's no virtual machines found on the server. Now, the last recording I tried to do on this, I went through the whole installation and it went through and it started to create the disk. And it just sat there creating the disk forever. So I had to cancel it all and it didn't work. The way I got this to work is if I go in here, back to the server, and we're, we got to make sure we're in PowerShell. So we got the little PS prompt there. Let's clear this. We're going to manually set up a VM. And then once it's set up, we can manage it through that Hyper-V manager. The command to do this is going to be new VM, new dash VM. Uh, tab completion, come on, there we go. We need to give it a name. So name, and the name we're going to give it is just Win8. And then we want to do how much RAM do we want to we allocate to it? So we're going to do memory startup bytes. It's going to be just, it's real simple, 1 GB. We need to tell it the path. So it's going to be switch new path or new VHD path. We need to give it the path. So it's going to be on our V drive. And I'll show you the V drive real quick. If we go here, we're on the server and we inspect disks. We can go on that VM server. We can see that there is a V drive. We're just gonna put it right on the root of V. Okay, let's go back. It's real simple, V colon backslash. We're gonna name it the, I'm just gonna name it the same thing, win8.vhdx, all right? And then we're gonna do switch new VHD size bytes. How, how much hard drive space? We're gonna do 20 gigabytes, 20 GB. Hit enter, it may take a minute. There, it's done. So um, now at this point, we can actually just minimize the server. We can go in here, let's refresh this. And now it sees that it has the Windows 8 virtual machine. The state is off, there's our screenshot. If we go to settings, okay, we're gonna, we need to set up a, an ISO for this thing. Let's see, here we go. Image file, I'm gonna browse to, it's on the NAS. NAS uh, software, Microsoft, 
operating systems. I think I got server in there. And we're going to do, oh, wait, we didn't want server. We wanted client. Let's do Windows 8. There's our ISO. Okay, we're going to apply it. We probably could just hit OK. Now remember, we still don't have a network adapter set up or anything, but that's OK. I just want to get a stupid VM, <laughs> VM set up and running. All right, it does show it running. Maybe it's still running from earlier. So let's connect to it and see if we can see what's going on. Boot failure, that's okay. That's probably from earlier. Let's power this thing off. Okay, let's try <laughs> let's try it again. Connect. All right, we could have just hit start and let's hit start and see what happens here. All right, there we go. So now we can actually kick off the Windows 8 installation. We can hit next. Of course, the screen area is not working out too well. Hit install. And our VM is going to install. Now, of course, there's other solutions out there that seem to be a little easier, but you know, I kind of wanted to do this for um, just so I could do it, just to just to see how it works. And remember, in a work group environment, I, it's kind of a pain, but if you follow these instructions, um, it should work for you. The only th other thing is, I did make a couple setting changes on the Hyper-V server itself that I have not I have not reinstalled the Hyper-V server completely from scratch again to see if all those all this still works so if you're still having problems let me know i will be happy to just wipe this whole hyper v server and do it again but um, i think you should be good at this point